Keshe Foundation, an independent, non-profit, non-religious, space-based organization founded by nuclear engineer Mehran Tavakoli Keshe, is introducing to humanity the science of the universe, plasma science. Keshe Foundation develops universal knowledge in space technologies that provide solutions to major global problems, revolutionizing agriculture, health, energy, transportation materials, and more. The application of plasma science in the form of specially developed plasma reactors and other devices will give humanity the real freedom to travel in deep space. Plasma science exists throughout the whole universe. It is here and it belongs to you. Our knowledge, research, and development regarding the plasma structure has progressed to the point of enabling everyone to participate in the process. Become a creator and understand the work of the universe for the good of humankind on this planet as well as in space. The use of MEGRAVs, nanomaterials, GANs, liquid plasma, field plasma, and other plasma technologies have come as a new dawn for humanity to progress and work in harmony with the universe. Conventional technology applications are wasteful, damaging, and cause pollution to the planet and all living beings. Plasma science provides solutions and improves existing methods and use of resources in all aspects that touch the lives of all beings. Plasma is defined by the foundation as an entire content of fields which accumulate and create matter and is not defined by its physical characteristics like ionization or temperature. Also, with plasma science, we understand how we can convert matter back to the fields. Quoting from Mr. Cash, MEGRAV stands for Magnetic Gravitational, which means plasma absorbs or gives. And every plasma has the both. It has give and it has take. And when they can't find the balance, they distance themselves until they find the balance they can give to the others. That they can receive what they want to receive and give further. Certain atoms and molecules release and absorb magnetic or gravitational fields. Released fields are available to be absorbed by other objects. The Keshe Foundation has developed a way to gather these free-flowing fields from the environment within a resourceful and beneficial new state of transitional matter, which M.T. Keshe named GANs. The first step of the process of the formation of various basic types of GANs is nanocoating metals. This is carried out either chemically by etching, steam coating with sodium hydroxide, or thermally by heating, fire coating by gas burner. During either coating process, gaps between outermost layers of atoms are created. The residual coating is often referred to as nanocoating, defined by the structured layers of nanomaterial, which build up during the creation process of the coating. Nanocoated metal, in interaction with other various metal plates, in a saltwater solution creates MEGRAV fields. These fields then attract available elements to form a specific GANS, which collects and settles at the bottom of the container. This GANS is formed from independent energized molecules like little suns that can be used in various applications. Welcome everyone to the <clears throat> Understanding Plasma Science Part 2 of a 12-part series. Today's topic will be health, soul, and nature. And um, we have uh, Jim McDonald as our main presenter, I believe. And I think he's ready to go there. Jim, are you ready? Yes, thank you, Flint. I can just start sharing my screen. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, I'm substituting for Flint today, actually. All right, so welcome everybody. This is part two of the series of workshops on understanding plasma science. Today we'll be 
focusing on the next three topics, which is the health section, the soul and the nature, which encompasses agriculture and the whole environment. Today, the health section will be given by Dr. Rodrigo and uh, the soul part will be given by, presented by Lisa and then I'll finish off with the uh, part on the environment and the nature. So I'd like to just hand over to Dr. Rodrigo if he's there and then he may begin his presentation. Hello, everyone. I just want to welcome to a new and the future listeners of the new teachings of our plasma technology. And let me share. Can you all see it? Yes. So this new technology is brought by the CAS Foundation and thanks to Mystic CAS, Mahatan Tevakoli CAS, is a science and uh, a nuclear physicist. And he was raised and, and surrounded by people involved in the medical field. So he was able to understand the body, and not only the body, but the, wor the world and the universe. And he's dedicated his life to share all his knowledge to humanity. So we know there's a lot of information out there. For some people, it's difficult to find the principles of every of all this technology. So now, thanks to Cash Foundation and Gene McDonald, who have decided to bring this new concept or basics of every aspect of health, agriculture, transportation, everything. So you'll be able to understand and encourage you to continue with this beautiful technology. We only have one condition of this. The condition is that once you have all this information, share, with your, share all your knowledge with your family, your neighbors, your friends. That's the only way we can change the whole world. So basically there's a, this new workshop is about health. And all this information, as I said, is going to uh, give you basics. And, but you can find all this information and more on YouTube. Everything, every knowledge, every uh, um, teaching has been uh, posted on YouTube. And you can find it from 1 to 181 Knowledge Seekers Workshop, or even on, on the Cash Health Teaching Workshop. And as well to uh, KSSI Blueprint Station. You will find all this information, but I know, as I said, it is difficult to, f to find the basic because for some people to see, to watch all this, know, uh, all this uh, information, all this teaching, it requires a lot of time. So, this is the, the uh, idea to bring you the basics of everything so it will be easy for you to understand this beautiful, beautiful technology. And this uh, chapter, we're going to uh, understand a little bit of how life is created, what plasma or GANS is, how the body works as a plasma unit, and how the body interacts with the plasma fields. Interesting. And we're going to repeat continuously a lot about this concept in the future, so you will be able to, will be able to understand all this beautiful technology. So basically, to understand how the body works uh, or form, is we have to understand in the universe, we have all these elements. This periodic table we have on the right side means that all these elements exist in the whole universe, plus other, other elements that we still don't know. But these are in all the universe. And understand that in the whole universe, there's a magnetic gravitational field. Every single element, small, big element, has a magnetic gravi gravitational fields. So interact in between each other. So here on Earth, specifically on Earth, we interact. The, the gravitational field of Earth here and, and the Sun would interact two fields 
when they rub each other, they create light. So yes, creates light. So what you see for a lot of people is going to be a surprise. But when you see outside on the beautiful morning, clear sky, you see that beautiful sun shining outside. Well, actually, it's not the sun. It's this light. This light is being produced or made by the, the interaction of these two fields. And one of the, uh, uh, how we can be sure that this is a light, is not the sun. When you go outside in the space, you see the whole space is black. It's, it's totally black, no light. If we see, if we have a big light like this one, we're thinking that everything and every part of the universe has been light, has been uh, shining like the blue, uh, like a, uh, a daylight, but not everything that interacts in this field here inside, we see the light, but outside, of, we don't see any light. If you watch any of uh, those videos of uh, the astronauts working outside on the uh, uh, satellite, you will see that there's no light. Not only not light, there's no, no stars. So as well, there's no star. You cannot see our stars out, out here. But when you are inside Earth, the stars, like the, the sun, interacts with the field of Earth. So you can see the star, but the stars are on this level. You see the reflection of that with all the interaction of those two, this, uh, uh, magnetic gravitational field of the stars with the Earth, and you see the lights, those little points, those little lights of the stars. But outside, we don't have. But with that interaction, besides the lights, we know we are, we have seen, we have heard many times through the medical field that with the sun, do you only have that helps to produce or synthesize the vitamin D to help us for the light. But actually, it's a little things. Actually, what we have from the sun is these elements. As I said, all the elements are universal and universe exists. But here in the interactive bring this element, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. The body, not only the body is made of these elements, 96% of the body is made of these elements, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, 96%. As well, the plants are made of these elements. Animals are made of these elements. And only 3%, well, I mean 4% of these elements are the rest. We are made of 25 elements. You have to understand 25 elements. If we bring balance with these 25 elements, that means we can manage, handle every disease we have. So it will be easier to handle, to bring balance to the body. We will we'll explain in the future how you create diseases, how we the body creates diseases, because you are the one who create all the diseases. We don't explain in the future, but you have to understand that in order to bring balance to the body, in order to be able to change the structure of the body to bring the, uh, the normal functionality of the body, you have to work with those this elements. So also you have to understand, and this is for the future, as we said, those elements exist all over the universe. So that means that every planet, not only in this uh, solar system, but everywhere in the universe, every planet that interacts with their own sun, interacts with those fields and brings different elements into that planet. And they will create life in a different way. A life that will be according to the environment of this planet. So don't expect to see the same kind of life that we have on Earth. That will be different, a little different, or a lot, or a lot of different. So uh, unfortunately, um, the system or the media have uh, put on our mind that everything that is not with the shape of, of the human become a monster. They're, they're not. So there are different kinds. We have to understand there there's a different kinds of life with different shapes. But it doesn't mean they are, they are terrible or uh, aggressive. There are different lives. So here on Earth, the interaction of the sun and earth brings the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and it comes to the body. That elements works on the body, the carbon, all those elements are in continuously interacting with the body. Inside every, I mean, that means is that trying to explain that this is the whole body, but inside the carbon, uh, inside the body, the carbon is connected to every single cell of the body. The oxygen, the oxygen 
He is, is the one who brings elements inside the body. He is like in control of elements that comes to the body. The nitrogen are in control of what the what kinds of, what things has to be eliminated by the body. And the hydrogen it brings the energy to the body. So that's important of this uh, elements. So, but also we have to understand we have to be familiar with the other elements. Like the 3% of the element is calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, chlorine, and sulfur, because we're gonna start making gains out of this. We have to understand that not only the elements that comes from the uh, interaction of sun and earth, but also elements that have on, on the planet. Like calcium is important for the bone formation, to growing nerves, to enhance the immune system. And we're gonna give you more information on how this calcium works on that. So we're gonna start making GANS of this as well. Not only the GANS of the CH3 that you have been familiar with, the CO2 and, and copper oxide, but you will learn how to make GANS of everything. Also magnesium that is important to bone structure, to, to re, uh, rebuild muscles, rebuild organs, tissues the sodium to interact with uh, the, uh, the formation, the, the formation of the electrolyte structure, and it controls the, the pH levels on the, uh, on, on the body. Potassium as well to help to grow nerves, electro, uh, and also works uh, on the uh, electrolyte structure. So it is important to understand all those kinds of elements. as phosphorus, chlorine, sulfur, that has a different application in the body, we all were learned how to make in a very easy way how to make GANS out of these elements. And the 1% of those elements is, this is oh, it is uh, just a little bit of that, but they play an important role in the body, like iron, we know that, that, that helps to, to build blood, but also we'll be able to build hemoglobin out of, out of the iron using the iron, using metals, using alchemy, we can be, we will be able to make uh, hemoglobin. So in the future, we won't have to make or give blood transfusion to people. We'll be able to do all this stuff with this technology. Seeing plays an important role in, on the emotions of the body. So we understand inside the body, inside the brain, we don't have blood inside the brain. This is controlled for certain elements, but this is zinc is one of the most important to control the emotion. And also we're gonna explain uh, how this uh, elements work on your emotions and your body to, to create that. We can help the body to, uh, to regenerate itself, to bring balance to the body, to get rid of, of all diseases, copper, that is important to build muscles, cartilage, uh, and ligaments. It's important, the iodine, how you connect yourself to the soul. It's incredible. All of these single elements uh, plays an important role in your body, and you will understand, you will be able to make, to control it, to use them. Instead of using those millions or well, thousands of medications that have been built or made to bring, to, to control the, the the diseases. Once we understand this, uh, how to use those elements, we can bring balance to the body and make the different changes, incredible changes in the body. That is important. So if you see any chemical formula, anyone, you will see this, you will see the carbon, you will see the hydrogen, you will see the nitrogen, everything. This is the formula of a uh, chemical formula, every amino acid in the body. On the right side, when we add so that's those uh, uh, elements that come from the uh, interaction of the sun and earth comes to the body. When we add those elements that belongs to the planet earth, like iron, it creates hemoglobin for, for the humans or magnesium chlorophyll for the plants. So interacts, all the elements interacts with the elements of the, of, the world and, uh, of the world, of the planet and creates different kinds of life, different kinds of interaction. So, and the combination of all these amino acids, it helps to build proteins, muscles, blood, heart, liver, lungs, and everything else that makes up for our body. So it will be easy for all of you to use all these elements and bring balance to your body, get, uh, make disappear every disease. Now we're understanding, I, as a doctor, I've been practicing for more than 30 years, and I 
let me tell you, this new technology is so beautiful that will be easy, easy to handle every disease, easy to build your will. At the end of this uh, teaching, you will be able to, to build not only elements, gans of these elements, plasma of these elements, but also be able to build units that bring balance to your body, that we call them health units, health units, because it brings balance, it creates an environment to bring balance to your body. So you will be able to do that. You will see a different uh, prototypes, different uh, um, shapes and uh, forms of uh, this uh, health unit that will be easy to, to work with. So, but we had to understand the basic of this. On the current science, we see this kind of formula, the connections between every element like this, but actually is the, on the right side. This is interaction. Every element, as, as we said, every element has a magnetic gravitational field. So everything is connected to those fields. Everything in the universe and the body, what is inside the subside, everything in the planet, everything is connected. And we're going to repeat it over and over again. We are connected through the fields of magnetic gravitational field. Every single cell in your body is connected to that field. So instead of seeing those elements, they connect like this one molecule of carbon with one, another molecule of carbon and nitrogen like this, actually they interact in between them all together, moving together to create a, a bigger field. As also that you, you're gonna be familiar with is this because the, those numbers that we see like here, a hydrogen two, carbon 24, what does it mean? So you have to be familiar like this. We see here atomic weight is 72. The interaction of all those elements, all every, every molecule of all this, the way that the atomic weight is 72. How do we get to that number? So it is important and you understanding how to deal with this element. Because in the future, once you understand the atomic mass of every element, that the atomic number, you will know which one is stronger and which one is as, uh, as weaker. So you will handle those elements. Also, the uh, understanding the way they, uh, the, the strength of those elements, you will use it accordingly to change something in your body. So it's important to have this. I myself, I have the periodic table in my office, in my garage, everywhere that I work, everywhere that I, that I work with this, uh, technology, I have this periodic table, periodic table with me. I have to understand how to uh, how every single element works on the body. So like this one, to give you an example, this oxygen. If we have an, a periodic table, I put them on the red box on the right side on the top. It's oxygen. You see on the bottom, the uh, uh, atomic mass is 15.9. So we run in 16. So Every, every uh, uh, molecule of oxygen, the weight is 16 because, and then we have two oxygen here, it becomes 32. So the weight, the atomic, uh, atomic weight of the uh, oxygen is 32. The carbon here, as you see in the, on the right side on, top, up on the top, is 12. So that means two, two molecules of uh, carbon makes 24. So the atomic weight of the carbon is 24 in this formula. Hydrogen on the left side, on the top and the left side, we have in the red box is one. So we have uh, two hydrogen. So the atomic, uh, the atomic uh, mass is one. The atomic mass is uh, because if we have two uh, uh, molecules of hydrogen, is atomic, atomic weight of two. The nitrogen here on the right side as well is 14. So the atomic mass, the atomic weight of the uh, nitro uh, nitrogen is 14. And we add all those uh, atomic uh, weight of every single element, we come 72. So this is the atomic, this is the strength of these elements, of this combination of elements, 72. So you will be able to understand how strong is every element, but you have to have this periodic table. So this one, to give an example, the number that has on the top is atomic, uh, atomic number. That means that gives you the idea how many uh, protons and, and electrons has this element. Sometimes uh, not all the elements, one third of the elements uh, of this periodic table has uh, the number represents the protons, but not 
not necessarily have the same amount of electrons. That's what we call them isotopes. So uh, some elements has isotopes. That means they have a different amount of electrons. They have the, the protons that have been a number on the top left of the every, uh, uh, every uh, element that is uh, presented in this table, but not necessarily will have the same electrons. As I said, some of them will have a different ones. And then you will, uh, in the future, will be under, you will be able to understand this isotopes of, of elements. You will be able to produce, the, to make them through uh, producing or making different kind of, uh, of fields. So, so another example here is atomic mass, atomic number is on the top, as I said, as I said to represent the numbers of electrons and protons. And on the bottom is atomic mass, atomic mass of these elements, which is, and if we want to know how many neutrons this element has, so we have the little um, equations. So we, we uh, rest, we have here the atomic mass, which is 23, and we subtract the, num the number of the atomic number is 11. So that means when we do this equation, we know how many neutrons this element has. Like this one, aluminum, we have the atomic mass of 27. This one, we run at this number and the atomic number is 13. That means that it has, when we subtract the number, atomic number from the mass, we, have, we know how many neutrons we have in this element. Because this is important because sometimes with some uh, reactions of, or mix of gas, we can remove some neutrons from some elements. We can remove some uh, um, uh, molecules from some elements and change it. So, on the and um, the chemical and in, in the science, the current science, when we see those periodic, periodic table and see those elements are um, different, means that. There is no way to change this, but in the plasma technology, in the plasma field, we understand that we can change any any elements, just subtracting, just removing some electrons of that element becomes another one. So we'll be able to understand how to bring any elements, so elements in the future. So here, so this and, and the real in the plasma structures, we see this. As I said, every single element has a magnetic and gravitational field. Every single one consists in, and and all together creates a field, creates what we call a column barrier. It's a field, a magnetic or gravitational field. The stronger field will be in the center, and the, the weakest field will be on the outside. But every single element is connected from from one side, it comes the energy from the uh, from the other one. So it's gravitational comes the energy. Magnetic gives away energy, but also this energy that gives away some of them comes back to here to the to the element to the center of the element, and that is connected. The the, the uh, uh, magnetic field gives away to connect to the other one. It becomes gravitational to the other one because receive, and this one receive gravitation and gives magnetic. So this terminology you will be familiar with. This is important. So another thing is the current science we see with so many refer to the uh, nucleus and protons, electrons is like a forming an orbit like this, a very uh, defined orbit around the nucleus. But actually, it's not this way. Every every element like electrons has their own magnetic gravitational field. The proton as well, and the neutron. All all every single one, and when you get together, is it forms one field. It's like having a matches. You have a little box with matches. Matches you light. You light one match. You have a light in one match. You have another match. You light. You have a light in the other one. But when you put it together, it becomes one. You don't know which one is uh, belongs to what, so it becomes one. This is the same way. This every magnetic field when they interact together becomes one. And actually, in the real life, is not the way we see here. And because every element like this, this one is not connected by itself. Related, it doesn't create this the orbit like the way it's uh, it's showing here around the nucleus. 
Actually, every single element, this one interacts with the nucleus, but also this part interacts with this one. This one interacts with this one also as well. So the orbit is not as soft and round like this. It's actually is moving in the different shapes like this. All the orbits is different. It's not this one. It's so irregular. It's not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So the, the, the shape of that is not the way we present it in, in the regular science, in the current science. It's totally different because every element is moving to different shapes. Even the planet, the planet Earth is, doesn't go around the, the, uh, the Earth like a, a soft and beautiful round orbit. Actually, it's very irregular. It's not up and down it goes because this, the Earth interacts not just only for the sun, but also Earth interacts with every single planet of the solar system interact with each other. Those, that's why there's a different movement of every single one, as well as this one. So this is, in the future, we'll now understand, we'll, we'll be able to make those ganses. Gans, what does it mean, gas? Gans means gas and nanostate and small particles. Nano, when we call about, we refer to nano, it's a small, very small particles, and this is like a... Uh, uh, a solid a gas state. You move it. This, this when you create this gas, it's incredible. The energy you can feel it. It's not like when when we talk about different elements like crystal. We know that the crystal have incredible uh, incredible uh, uh, things that can make to the body, but we don't feel anything when we somebody gives us or or elements. Oh, this is gonna give you some energy. Oh yes, yeah. peace and love. We don't we don't feel anything. This one, when we interact with these gases, we feel the energy. Your body feels the energy. This is you can feel it when you mix it. It becomes or stronger or weaker, but you can feel the change of every single uh, uh, gas that you're making. It's beautiful. So the body, the body is made of millions and millions of this gravitational magnetic fields. Everywhere are. This man. Every single cell, every single cell in your body is these gravitational magnetic fields. We say in the medical field, okay, every organ, every single cell is connected to the to connected tissue. But what is a connected tissue? We don't know. We don't understand. It doesn't make sense. We take it for granted, though, whatever they say that is the way that it's in medicine. But it's not. Actually, every single cell in the body is connected through the is connected to every single other cells through the magnetic gravitational field as well as, and this is the thing that the problems with the medical field is they, they don't address that field. When we have, they go back to the other one, that every single, every single cell has the magnetic gravitational field and creates a field around the body. And it's incredible ways to prove that that field exists. It's not just imaginary uh, thing that we, we bring we brought up. It has, it's, it is, there's a lot of technology out there that prove that we have that feel around our body. There's incredible ways to prove it and we'll do it. We have incredible, beautiful uh, examples how to uh, understand, how to prove that that body, that energy body around you, your, uh, uh, that feel around your body really exists. And that is where we're gonna um, work with. So we will, if we wanted to make any change on your body, we're gonna use that field that you have to create a different environment. So, because through your body comes a lot of energy. Normally it also in the future, we're gonna um, um, explain how the body feeds itself. 80% of the energy that the body gets is is through the skin and what you breathe, and 20% through the food you eat. So that feel, that energy, it comes to your skin, is receiving energy constantly, all the time. 80% of the en energy that your body needs in order to survive comes through your skin. So if the energy comes through your skin, imagine how can we do, what can we do? It's a lot of fields that we can work with. It's a, a beautiful field that now we can work with. So to create that field, if we, you need something, you need a medication, you need something, whatever elements to bring balance to your body, we took advantage of that field, put another kind of field around that field. So it comes to your skin, through your skin, to your body and make those changes. 
we don't need in the future, we don't need to take any pills and injections and tablets and capsules. We don't need to do that. We can make the create plasma of every element that we need. Even here in the future uh, teachings, we'll teach you how to make plasma out of your medications. So you don't have to buy any more medications, any more pills. You Whatever you have, you're gonna change it on plasma. We'll teach you how to make plasma out of those medications and use it, just the energy plasma, and it will last forever. You don't have to buy any new pills in the future. You create a plasma, the GANS, those GANS, the photo you see, the same GANS, and when you make GANS of medications, it will last forever, for many, 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 many years. So you don't have to buy new medications in the future and just put it around the field and it will have the same effect exactly the same effect. Every organ, every single organ, as I said, has magnetic gravitational field. Our body is made of various GANs. It's in a GAN state. Every organ in the body, that's also we're going to explain how the body works. It's not the way we thought it works. It's totally different. It's in a GAN state. It's, it's totally energy. So the body takes energy out of the food, of the environment, not the solid stuff. So we create, we are full of strength of energy. This collection of various field strength and combination makes up the different organs. Every single organ has their own, its own magnetic gravitational field. So we can work specifically, specifically for, with every single organ, create different fields to target organ, to change it, just create energy to change that organ. We don't have, as I said, and I'm going to repeat it over and over again, we don't need injections, we don't need medications, we don't need that. Just create an environment, and in and, and that environment, put all those elements that your body needs, and we'll make ten, those changes. Everything. So now we're understanding that the field, using this energy, energy fields, will allow us to restore the body to its original health state. It will be easy. And not only the body, as I see this photo, this is a new, new, new future for animals, for everything we create, we build in a health unit for animals. Uh, we can, the same way the body works is the same as the animals, the plants. So we change in the whole structure, the whole way of handling the whole world is gonna be different, beautiful. So this is, this is everything for today. If you have any questions, you're welcome. Please remember everybody to keep the questions specific to what Dr. Rodrigo has presented today. Thank you. I'm gonna start sharing just in case you have questions, you have in the chat, you have any question? Well, I have the chance, love you, we love you, thank you, I love you too. I'd like to say only an addition, it's Sander from Hungary. Yes, Sander. About uh, various uh, definitions and concepts uh, spread on the internet, because somebody wrote it in a beautiful form, and this often gets uh, into the memory of people, uh, one of these uh, uh, things, for instance, uh, it happened about uh, the neutral pH. If you remember, in the early 90s, it was a huge campaign from a cosmetical company about uh, so-called pH neutral cosmetics with pH 5.5. As a result of uh, the uh, persuasive promotions, this entered into the mind of many people. Once uh, somebody at an international uh, conference with pharmacists, so people highly educated in chemistry, uh, in a break, he put the question, uh, how much is uh, the neutral pH? And everybody in, in the room just uh, chanted in the choir uh, that uh, it is 5.5. Well, we know, well, it's uh, 7. 7 is the neutral pH. So this is uh, 
the effect if we see so many times the same thing appearing again, again, again as a visual form in, in front of our eyes. So, and I'd like to add here about uh, the earlier presented uh, definition of the GANs as a gas in nano state. I'd like to say that appeared uh, there's a, a transcription done by somebody in a very beautiful uh, um, artistic form. Meanwhile, Mr. Cash uh, always has written in his books and his uh, CO2 paper that it is uh, gas to nano solid. So both solid and state are with S, but uh, as far as I understood, according to Mr. Cash's definition, GANS uh, um, is an abbreviation from gas to nano solid, which is a state of matter, and hither to unknown state of matter. So, uh, unfortunately, in uh, many presentations, this uh, state and solid have been replaced uh, because uh, our memory tricks us, and both are starting with S. So, don't forget, so, uh, it's, it's a gas uh, which is a state of matter, which goes from gas to a nano-solid. And solid means not liquid, not, uh, not gaseous. So, that was my point only. And thank you for the beautiful presentation of Dr. Rodrigo. It, 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 it uh, was uh, um, very good, elevating. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Sander, for your observation. And I already changed that, that uh, S instead of state, a solid. Thank you so much for your information. You are welcome. I, I know the effects on the long time. Uh, for instance, uh, about uh, uh, the creation of uh, uh, CH3 GANs. Somewhere, somebody did a good job and uh, did a beautiful uh, summarization of the technologies in another language, not in English, and due to some uh, uh, words lost in translation, um, it reached uh, to a recipe where we use for making uh, CH3 GANs by uh, placing in a box with uh, salt water uh, a nano-coated copper plate which is connected together with a iron plate which is not good because if we use an iron plate we get mainly iron oxides and CH3 is very important for production of energy, it's important for uh, health application and so on, so hydrogen is the giver. If we have iron oxide, we have no hydrogen in that gas. And the original was a zinc-coated uh, iron, zinc-plated iron, the presence of both zinc and iron are needed. And if it was lost, uh, the zinc uh, coating was lost uh, in translation, uh, that information was reproduced in tens of thousands of uh, samples so many people went on, on, on the wrong way because uh, they easily, easier accepted uh, the beautifully uh, aesthetically presented information than to look at uh, the original one. If you look, go back uh, to a YouTube channel Spaceship Institute, which functioned in 2014, where you see several boxes of uh, GANs uh, where uh, knowledge seekers uh, made them according to instruction of Mr. Cash, and there you see uh, zinc coated uh, iron and not uh, bare iron so it's very good we, we go back sometimes to the basics and uh, to do such a little corrections otherwise uh, uh, it will become a trend on that somebody will obtain uh, some people will obtain very good results and other will obtain random results so i posted uh, so we can also be uh site they listen to that so now they can see it is a gas not a solid great thanks for the correction thank you sander i appreciate it any other questions for anybody else you can always raise your hand No questions, everybody's healthy. 
it seems like Flint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Rodrigo. Um, I think the, the health section um, is going to be very, very important for everybody because in, we're all looking for something that can make us uh, feel better, um, something that can sort of help us to overcome a lot of uh, problems out there in, in, in terms of the environment and what we're eating, what we're drinking. So I think these health teachings will really help a lot of people out there to take responsibility and take charge of their own health. I'd like to add just uh, one small remark. Don't throw away the old science that was all needed uh, for the development of the new science. But please understand when uh, you see studies, of, uh, all the studies about the composition of the body, um, usually they cannot measure the composition of a live body. So if they study, if the scientists study from chemical viewpoint the composition of the body, in most of the cases uh, they study the leftover ashes of the human uh, tissues. And uh, that already has a different uh, structure than a live tissue. We have a couple of questions here that came up in uh, YouTube. Uh, one of them was, how does this model work? What is the states of matter with a new knowledge? Is that a health question? I think he was asking about uh, the, the ganses. And another question for the same person was, uh, what does gas and nano solid mean? If they could explain that a little bit more. We went over that last, so if they can watch the first part did that last week, they can watch, get an understanding on that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. We're going to go a bit onto the soul now. Um, because we have um, discussed some of how the body works. And so because of the whole understanding of plasma fields and how they work, um, we have to also understand that the soul is a plasma field too, and how we can understand ourselves and what we are. So what are we actually? And this is a fundamental question I think we've asked ourselves forever. So now we understand when we deal with plasma science that we are a plasma being. And in, in a sense, when we create all our different reactors or devices, we're creating other plasma sources of fields. But that is exactly what we are. We are a reactor and we are a plasma being. So we receive and emit fields continuously all the time and GANS fields are much stronger than the matter state. So our body is a plasma in the GANS state of matter and so we are emitting very strong fields all the time. The issue is that we don't see these fields because they are not specifically tuned to our, um, our amino acid structure of our eyes. So these fields are not something we see, but often something that we feel. Uh, and this is where literally when you walk into a room or you meet somebody, you, you, feel, you feel them. And um, those are the fields we're talking about. So if we absorb and emit plasma fields continuously, um, we have to start understanding what we're doing with these plasma fields, what we're absorbing and what we're admit, um, emitting and, and how this all works. And this science, in a sense, starts to allow us to understand how our souls operate, 
how we operate in our physical bodies and how we need to continue to operate in a better way in the future because now if we can understand who and what we are we'll be able to um, find out what we're here to do and how we need to do it in a successful way so i'm sure a lot of you have seen this picture about the the field structure and mr kesh always likes to draw a wound up spring when he draws a plasma and in essence every plasma is like this wound up spring so this is including the body and what it does is it has a strong primal field right at the center that very very tightly wound strong field in the center and that is our soul and when we look at the outer edges of the field where the sprung has unwound it shows itself as a physical entity or the manifestation of that soul and that is the body and all the fields in between which are things like emotions and thoughts and whatever else goes through your head is connected to the emotion and is those fields in between so if we look at it a slightly different way um, you can unpack the spring by looking at the tightly wound center which is the principal field which is our soul and the physical body is the outside edge and the matter state which we've manifested and there is a transition matter in between which that transition matter are things like our emotions our memories and our thoughts and when we look at that transition matter that is what often will um, make up the reason why certain of our body becomes diseased or how we react to life in general but the physical body really is just a manifestation of the soul on this planet so it is really quite um it, it, it is um completely due to the conditions on this planet as to how we manifest ourselves so I just want to re reiterate this with this picture again because it's important that the soul is the primal central field and the out unwound bits is the manifestation of our body and the fields in between are connected to the emotion but on this chart you'll see that right at the end there's matter there our bodies are not matter um, our bodies are, are, are ganses and ganses are, are much more energetic and loose and are a much stronger type of a field than matter itself like a table or a chair so we have to ask ourselves the biggest question of all where is our soul and mr kish has explained this to us and we're now going to be able to literally find it and plot it and see the fields of it so the soul sits in the center of the brain and it is a non-physical principle field and when we look at our our brain the emotions are always um, manifested in the center in the layers of the brain and the physical attributes of how the body works and how it's everything is connected is always on the outer layers of the brain so this shows you that 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 um, wound up spring that we had a look at had a look at works exactly with the same principle so now we start understanding that everything is connected and our soul is the principle and if you can see here on this uh, x-ray we'll see on, ba on both the horizontal and vertical axes you can see that tiny little gap right in the center because our souls are not physical our souls are um, a very strong field which is not in a physical dimension and so there is the little gap that houses our soul um, and our emotion is our filter between our soul and our physical body so our soul is right at the center and is the source 
Our physical body is on the outside, but we have to get through all the emotions, which is the filter. And each of these emotions have different magra field strengths, like love, anger, sadness, fear. All of these things have different field strengths, but even so far as they have different field strengths for you or for me, maybe my feelings are lo of love are different to your feelings of love. Maybe anger is different for me because I don't get cross when you do something, but somebody else might. So even these concepts are really down to how you perceive the, the universe and the way you um, see the world and how you interact in it because you are the creator. Your soul is the creator of the perception of how you deal with reality on this physical uh, universe, planet that we live on. And so every single uh, emotion is really only what you perceive it to be. So this is quite important because we create our own filters in our emotion, um, which are some of the negative ones which block off things and manage to create diseases. Um, whereas the soul only wants to give off the love. The soul is beautiful and perfect and that's what it wants to give. And that's what it, you know, it, it, it is designed to do. So the soul creates a physical body in this environment of, of Earth. And the environment creates the physical body due to the conditions of the planet. This is the same as our Gantz box, where the interaction of the field between the plates in a salt water condition creates the type of Gantz we want. So the creative field, which is our soul, creates a human being. Genetics gives us a very basic blueprint of how we manifest, but the subtle something which is uniquely us is created by the soul. That extra long toe, the one eyebrow higher than the other, that slight dimple when we smile, is the soul expressing itself in its beauty. And so each living entity is like a 3D version of a round magnet. I hope you guys remember the round magnets from what we were busy, busy with last time when we showed our introduction. And we all give and receive fields continuously. And we impact everything around us even when we don't realize it. So every single uh, person that comes close to you, moves away from you, every being, every animal, every creature, um, we, are, we are giving and receiving fields to each and every one of us constantly. And so we have to start understanding what are we doing to all the beings around us? And we need to become aware of our impact on others and what fields we're giving and receiving. And this is the whole essence of, of plasma with the soul is to try and understand how we need to give, how we receive. And this is the first step on the road to giving ourselves and others the freedom to find the position which suits them best because we can understand our soul, how it gives and it receives and we'll be able to bring humanity to the next stage of enlightenment. And not through sentimentality, as Mr. Kesh says, or belief, but through the evolution of science, because we can look at this objectively and understand how our souls work. And from that position of knowing and understanding, we can start giving the love to all around us without the fear, because... The fear is always what's held us down because we didn't understand and we didn't know. But now if we understand the fields and how they work, we'll be able to give unconditionally because we all made from the fields. We created and connected to the creator and therefore we are the creator. We're all one and nothing is separate. And that's what we're going to understand about um plasma science and the science of the soul. So are there any questions? Did I put everybody to sleep? <laughs> Just waiting for people to speak up, that's all. <laughs> 
<laughs> you always have to wind down and wait for somebody to take a breath and push the unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> Or to raise their hand, you can, yeah, of course. We have, uh, excuse me, get my microphone on in live stream. Uh, we have a question in the live stream from George. Um, are there situations where this technology creates issues, such as in the pacemaker or in joint replacements? Ah, that's a Rodrigo question. Is he still there? <laughs> yes, can you repeat it, please? Okay. Um, George says, are there situations where this technology creates issues such as with pacemakers or joint replacements? Yes. Uh, we have to understand that this technology brings balance to your body. So the body has to make some changes to bring balance. So you have to change. If the body has something that doesn't belong to the body, there will have a tendency to reject that, that uh, 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 foreign organ. Like uh, if you have a peacemaker, peacemaker on your heart, that's, that one has a battery, that has a frequency. And if you expose these people inside this environment, which is another frequency, another energy, it might interact with the batteries of that uh, peacemaker, uh, peacemaker. So peacemaker. So you have to be careful not to use it on people who have. I have seen. I have used pe uh, people who have a knee replacement and use it this uh, these units, and they feel uh, for another reason. Like the, I have a person who have diabetes and have a knee replacement. And I'm treating them, um, I'm giving all this, uh, or creating this elements so or this environment for the diabetes, and he's responding. But he feels a little heat on the knee, on his knee. It's not rejecting, but we have to be careful what to do. They feel heat on the knee. So it's kind of a reaction of your body against that implant. So you have to be very careful when when to do and, and, and what kind of people are you going to use this technology? So the recommendation is to, so far, not to use it on people who have implants. As I said, I'm using, but I have, I, if you're going to use it, have somebody, a doctor close to you so you can check everything, how it's going on. I am a doctor, I can check everything. I can check the organ, how respond everything. So I will be able to decide in the moment what to do and what not to do. But definitely, and people who have a pacemaker do not use it. Definitely, no, it's 100% no. Uh, any other questions about soul? Just looking at the various uh, <laughs> chats here. You know, we're just trying to really introduce the concepts um, with Dr. Rodrigo and with myself, with the soul. We're just trying to introduce the plasma technology and the concepts for this first ones. Um, so I know there's not a lot of nitty gritty um, questions that we can ask right now, but it's just to try and introduce people to, to what um, we're going to be carrying on with later. We have a couple of attendees with their hands up. I'll bring them in. We have yeah. They'll have something to say. And Ekmar. Hello, this is Ekma from Germany. Uh, this is a soul question. Um, on your foil where you showed us the soul and uh, the emotions and the body, uh, the soul was in the center, um, yeah, <laughs> um, it, it is not uh, uh, like a full stop. Uh, it, it's not uh, one color. So my question is, does the soul have a center? 
because we have learned that uh, everything is uh, the same and uh, uh, very small and very big and uh, everything. So um, my question is, when I saw your picture, does the soul have a center or not? Um, I suggest, Ekmar, that we're going to start understanding that the soul has layers too, um, just like the body has layers. And as we go deeper and deeper into this, uh, we're going to get deeper and deeper into the knowledge of the creator. And so at this stage, I don't know. I'm sure the center of the soul is literally the fields of the creator itself. And that's why we are the creator. Um, you know, and, and there's layers um, as we're going out towards the outside, just like there's layers towards the, the physical. But that's just my... My, my knowledge at the moment and my feeling is how we're going to progress with this, but I, I don't know particularly just yet. Thank you. Uh, Liberty, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for the great presentation. Um, <clears throat> I just, you mentioned something that I think it's so important for us to look at. You say the soul only wants to give out love. And so therefore it's our own filters, our life experiences and how we've re reacted to them that prevent us at moments to be emitting love. Is that correct? That's how I see it. And because it's a filter, it's not only what goes comes in, but what goes out. So we, we filtering we we weakening the fields coming in and going out by creating blockages with these different negative emotions. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a couple questions here in Facebook from Elper. Um, actually, quite a few questions. I'll start with the first few that are kind of similar. Um, what is the soul? What does it contain? And is the soul you? Yes, we are the soul. Um, we've the soul manifesting ourselves as a physical body. And the soul is fields um, because it's not physical itself. It's just really strong physical, uh, really strong principle fields that create us. And um, at this stage, that's as much as I can tell you because. That's as much as I know myself. <laughs> um, I don't, don't know how else to express it unless you want to get really philosophical. Is the emotion a soul? No, the emotion is a field. And it's the fields that we put, that we put out or take in. And the creator, the, the, what's coming from the soul is the positive, the giving, the loving. Um, but because things happen to us when we're in our physical reality and uh, we become, you know, it's it's our history. As Dr. Rodrigo said to us today in one of our meetings, it's, it's, it's the, the emotions come from our history. So it's the past and it creates layers over us that, um, that define us, but then also... Um, you know, create filters so that we're not living life as we could if that emotion was not there, that negative whatever blockage is, is not there. We could be living such a different life. So th the emotion is just a field. And it, if they are negative emotions, they are literally blockages uh, on the filter of what our soul is projecting as our physical body. I can ask something. It's Rui from Portugal for be clear for everyone about so. Hi, Rui. Uh, can we say that the soul is the intent of, is the creator, it's the intent of the creation uh, uh, and use the emotion to manifest the physicality? I'm sure you could, yes. I think so. Thank you. 
have a few more questions here from Elper. Um, how come the soul is attached to the body and how? Well, it manifested the body. Um, you know, it on, on creation of the soul in the womb, literally as the egg and the sperm come together and create enough fields to, to, to pull in that, that strong soul strength, then the soul is what literally creates our physical body. So although there's genetic material there, our soul creates us. So at, the, at this point on this planet, yes, we're attached to our physical body, just as, our, just as a neutron um, has a central strong field nucleus um, in its center. So we are that. But once we, we, we die and lose our physical body, our, that principal field still carries on. Um, in a, in a stronger sense somewhere else. So yes, at this point, we're attached to our body. Um, and I'm sure some of us, well, maybe some of us listening aren't, <laughs> who knows. Okay, he continues to ask uh, some more questions here. How come my soul is not telling me to stop doing what is maybe wrong? What is the true language between the soul so that you can get at what they're saying? And how do we know what the soul wants and what it's telling us? What is the bridge of the language? The soul speaks very quietly and we all know what it says. It's just often we choose not to listen to it because everything else from the physical comes in really loud and tries to drown it out. But that, that little intuitive voice that tells you the difference between right and wrong, the difference between, oh, now I'm shouting at my child today, but actually I shouldn't be doing that because I'm being really nasty. That's your soul talking. Um, you know, some people call it conscience. Some, you know, many people have different words for it, but it's your soul talking. It's just often we don't choose to listen. And also, again, a product of where we come from, how we brought up, and our history um, puts those layers, those emotional layers in place so that we often don't listen. Okay, we have another question here from Ann Yellow in Facebook. How does the soul interact with the astral body? Yeah, unfortunately, definitions like astral body are ones that I don't use because I'm working def definitely from a, a plasma perspective. So we try not to use these other terms that come from other um, places or definitions because not everyone uses the same terminology. It's just like things like magnetical and gravitational. So um, I'm going to rather leave that one alone because... I think we can all misinterpret or discover what, you know, different ways of interpreting something like that. Okay, we have another question from Eileen in Facebook here. The soul I always thought was peace, happiness, truth, and wisdom. Well, all of those things come from a place of understanding the... Um, the giving, the loving, the essence, the essence of that we connected to everything. And when you're connected to everything, um, we take care of ourselves, we take care of others and, and learning and wisdom, yes, too. The wisdom to know the difference between, I suppose, right and wrong. So all of these things, yes, are pos positive traits. And that's our, all of those things are our soul. Okay, thank you. Alper again asks, is intuition the leader? Can we at least say that? Is intuition a leader? Yeah. Um, well, it should be. Not a very loud one, but it should be. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> it's how we listen to it that counts. Are we done? Poor old Jim is waiting patiently. I know. I have one, <laughs> one, last, one last question here. It was in Dutch. I had to translate it. Um, could the soul oh, you, not be a transporter? <laughs> could, could the soul not be a transporter that connects us all? It is. I don't know about transporter, but it definitely connects us all. It's, it's as the quantum physicists say, you know, um, everything in quantum is connected, you know, if it just touches, it just touches, it's always connected. But if we always were part of, of source, then everything is connected to everything else. And so we're all part of each other. And um, literally that's why we have to love each other and look after each other because, it, you know, anything you do, you're doing to yourself. It's, um, it's sort of self-explanatory when you get down to that level. Hi, Lisa. I have a question. <clears throat> who's, who's this? This is Boniface from uh, California. Go uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for your presentation. And uh, I suspect uh, my question probably has to do with... Uh, a later discussion, I don't know, that's why I'm asking, but uh, the subject of elevation of the soul uh, didn't come up. Uh, is it correct that that's something that is going to come up later? Yeah, we just wanted to introduce the, the, you know, where the soul sits and, and how it works, and it's the principle of everything. And then as we'll go through, we'll, we'll just, just, you know, describe different ways of, of soul operation and then how we can how we can operate our soul to elevate, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Was that it then, Flint? I believe so for now. Right, I'll I'll get Jim to come and start his bit. Right. Now we're back to Earth. Nature and where we live. So here again, we'll just be doing a lot of introductory concepts and then um, in the later workshops, we'll go into a lot more, more detail and understanding. So our environment today, we look at it around us. We as the people living in the environment and, and our scientists, we treat the plants and the soils as a chemical process. Uh, they look at how each element affects the plant, what it does mechanically. We have been taught uh, what fertilizers to use, what chemicals to spray, and what bugs to kill. Um, the focus on, on when we look at agriculture, it's all about the yield. How much, how much tons of crop can I get off my acre of land? And, but it has nothing to do about the well-being of the plant, the nutritional value of the plant, how these fertilizers are destroying the biology in the soil and the overall impact on our environment in which we're living. So our current understanding of the plants, the soils and fertilizers we use is about to change forever because we've only ever been told half the story. And the, the plasma science is, is here to sort of tell the other half of the story and think almost an extension of the story that we have learned so far. So 
So when we start looking at um, how we can use the, the plasma technology in nature, um, a lot of people will initially think, oh, okay, so now we can use this technology and how we can grow large and more abundant produce to eat. Um, but I think once we've finished, you'll realize that this aspect is only going to be a small byproduct um, of these teachings and, and the real understanding of using the plasma and using na in the nature. Through the plants and the environment, we will learn how plasma operates in living creatures. And all of these processes can then teach us how the universe works because how the plants operate, how the soils, the trees, the environment operates is just a small fractal of how the universe works. So if we start observing everything around us, we will be begin to understand how the bigger universe works. The field interactions between all of these different entities creates the soup of fields in which we live. Understanding this will allow us to create environments for all living things that support and nurture us all. And by understanding this science, we will learn how to restore nature and interact with the plants and animals in a very different way. You'll find that the, the web of life on this planet is connected on many levels. So from the smallest bacteria, which is amino acid based, to the most complex creatures, mammals, and more, we all share the common connection of this amino acid structure. And as Dr. Rodrigo introduced in the health section, um, the amino acid, basic amino acid structure is is consists of your carbons, oxygens, hydrogens, and nitrogens. So in the human body, we saw that we were almost based on 96% of based on, on the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. When we look the same at the plants, we find that they are almost also around 96% based on oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Just slightly different combinations, but together they total almost the same 96%. When we have a look at uh, bacteria, it's the same. The top four elements is carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen the four building blocks of life on this planet. So when we come back to this picture again, we can see that all life on this planet is made from the same basic amino acid structure. So it doesn't matter whether we're a human being, a fish, a tree, a bacteria, a mushroom, we're all based on the same amino acid structure. And every amino acid protein in the plants and the animals is in a GAN state. So it's a plasma which has magnetical and gravitational fields. And we learned in the health section early on today that our body is made of billions of, of GANSes forming the total plasma of the body. So each of those little ganses has its own magnetical gravitational field, but together they create the body's magnetical and gravitational field. And now we can start saying the same thing for the plants because the plants are also made of billions of ganses forming the total plasma of the plant. And that the plants themselves have magnetical and gravitational fields. And here we'll discover later on that the different types of plants will have different magnetical gravitational fields as well. 
So at the end of the day, we can say that humans, animals, plants, we all made of the same building blocks. And this is why we begin to start calling the plants and the vertical people, because they are also made of the same structure as amino acids. Plants, being the vertical people, are also sentient beings. They have a physical structure, which we can see. They also have emotions and they have a soul. Many experiments have been done around the world which show how plants react to our thoughts and our actions. But all this has been always been labeled a woo-woo science. You know, some of the experiment, for example, is um, you would take two plots of land uh, next to each other and you would ask one group of people to come and give those plants attention and water and just give them, you know, loving thoughts and then the other part very next door uh, you ask some people to come there and give hate um, and just disgust for the plants and you'll see the difference in the growth the growth where the plants have had the attention have the loving attention from us are growing beautifully whereas the the plot next door which has had the negative emotions no attention at all um, those plants do not grow very well. So that just that simple basic understanding uh, makes us realize that we as a human being connect to plants on our emotional level and plants react to us on emotional level. And when we start connecting to the plants, um, it it's becomes a knowing, it's, it's that connection The plants themselves have a connection with each other through the amino acid structure as they're all created from the same source on this planet. And when we will have the measurements, the, the instruments one day, we'll be able to measure the magnetical and gravitational fields of the plants. And we'll discover that how they communicate with each other is through these fields. Um, and Emotion is your communication line between the man and the plants. And this is why some people um, will have that connection and talk to their, their plants, you know, and it's just talking via the emotions. And it's the same when um, you'll see people and uh, some will call sort of have a green thumb because whatever they do in their garden, it's, it's always beautiful um, because they are always interacting with their plants giving their plants uh, love and attention, whereas other people, that just doesn't happen because they just don't have that connection with their, with their plants. And it all comes down to our emotional connection that we have with the plants around us. We have, as, as sort of a human being on this planet, we have chosen to ignore the way that the plants live and grow and the longevity of some plants because this way we show that we are superior to them. You know, the plants, they are in a different uh, time scale to us because you look at the lettuce plant will have sort of an eight to 12 week cycle. Whereas in you'll get some trees that are, are a thousand years old, some trees that are hundred years old. So they're living in a different time scale to us. And they move in a different time scale to us, you know, to us, the plants and nature around us doesn't move much, but they're all moving, but it's in a different time scale that we just don't see. And the plants have been on this planet long before man and animals, and they've structured themselves into society where they can guarantee their survival. Because when one has a look at there's about 1500 types of animals, on this planet, but there's hundreds of thousands of different plant types on this planet. And they're all just different living beings, different creatures that are able that have chosen where they would like to live on this planet in the different conditions which suit them.
So everything has a spirit or a soul. You know, spirit is the word that's that's often used, particularly by the um, original people and the indigenous people around the world. But from the smallest little rock, the bacteria in the soil, the plants, the birds, insects, trees, the rivers, the streams, the mountains, and the oceans, they all have a soul. And nature strives for balance and harmony continuously. And nature tells a story when one has to look and sit. And, and I urge a lot of you to go and find a nice spot in your garden or in the woods and go and sit there for an hour and just watch and observe everything that goes on around you. Just sit against a tree and watch. There's the whole other world out there that we have forgotten even exists and we have to realize that we are also just a very small part of nature here on, on this planet Earth. And because we, we understand that we're all connected, so when we start destroying anything in nature, we are essentially destroying a part of ourselves because everything is connected, nothing is separate. This new understanding of the world around us through this plasmic technology is going to change the way that we see and perceive everything. Um, it will give us a new understanding of what is out there. And if we're wanting to start communicating with um, other beings or creatures from different parts of this universe, I suggest we start right here in our own backyard first and learn to communicate with nature itself around us. Because it's just waiting to say hello and we'd like to learn from you. And nature is going to be a very great teacher for all of us in understanding this, this science because we can go outside and see how it's operating there right in front of us all the time. Um, with the technology, we we'll learn understand with the, where the plants work and how our body works and how nature works. It's it's operating from that point of view of, of the science of the plasma. So, in summary of of today's workshop. We've understood from the health section that we all made from the basic amino acid structure and that as the human body, you are a plasma reactor and your soul creates the physical body on this environment of the earth. And so all creatures on this earth are also made of those same amino acid connections. We all come from the same source. And so all creatures on this planet have a soul as well. You're now open for questions. Any of our panelists have a question? Good day, Jalal here. Hi, Jalal. Hi. What was the question again, please? I didn't hear it quite. Good. There was no question. Do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any question. No, thank you. I don't have. Okay. Well, we have a statement from Shweta in the uh, live stream chat, which goes, um, yes, indeed, the trees are like guardians. A feeling always comes when we are around them as they know the knowingness much, much more than us. Yeah, they've been around longer um, than what we have on this planet. So they have many stories to tell. It's interesting in uh, Canada, we just had a few days ago uh, a National Tree Day. 
which okay. was dedicated to trees. And um, um, Joyce Murray, who's a representative for uh, in the West Coast for, uh, uh, for the Parliament, actually got up in Parliament and announced the National Tree Day and that it's a dedication to trees. <laughs> and um, uh, they talked about tree planting and she was a tree planter in her earlier life and now she's a you know one of the main politicians in, in Canada and uh, it's interesting because I actually planted trees in one of her tree planting camps and I actually worked for that company that is a tree planting company for about 10 years that was uh, run by her and her husband uh, Dirk Brinkman so um it's interesting that there is that tree consciousness among many people, at least in Canada and many countries of the world. And people, um, I, I understand they just planted several million trees in India, I believe it was. They had a, a huge project where they got tens or even, I think it was hundreds of thousands of volunteers. I believe they planted tens of millions of trees, something like that. Yeah, there's many people around, many millions of people around the planet that have the connection to where they live and the nature. You know, it's, it's just now that we, you know, we've always sort of sort of labeled the, fe the sort of people as a bit uh, out there. But now we can begin to understand that it, it comes down to the science. And if we can understand the science, then we know that there, that um, what these people have been talking about for all these, all this time is, is true. Um, so it, it does open up a whole new perspective for, for a lot of us. It makes the, uh, insult they used to call me oh you're just a tree hugger libby and <laughs> now it's a compliment <laughs> <laughs> yes now you can say thank you <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean it's the same maybe, story when, when maybe uh, the, i was just yeah. gonna say maybe the trees say oh you're just a human hugger to the other trees <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. be a human hugger. Stay with us, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what they do say sometimes. Uh, not very pleasant, I'm sure. <laughs> but the, we do have a, a symbiotic relationship with the, with the plants and all things around us. So I am sure that in, on a basic level, uh, when we connect with our fields, that uh, we both feel good. Yes. Yeah, we'll learn later on how a bit more, go into a bit more detail in, in the whole connection that, that we have. And um, I think if we listen to Thursday's uh, teaching from Mr. Kish, he's going to go into a bit more on, on the soul details of, of the plant, which is going to be very, very fascinating that we are changing the school of thought. Yes, and it's hard to change our thoughts. Um, it's hard to, to, to understand and accept that uh, all these creatures around us um, have a soul, they have emotion, um, because I think we tend to rather want to ignore those facts because then it makes it easier for us. But uh, we have to come to terms with it. And it is going to be very, very difficult for, for all of us to come to terms. That, that brings us to Wolfgang's question here in the live stream chat. It says, so if we destroy other souls by eating food, we destroy ourselves? And how can this be changed by thanking or similar emotions until we don't need to eat anymore? It's going to be a process um, to get to the point where, yes, we won't be eating, but you know, it, everything is, it has to be done step by step and it's a stage. And the first step, I think uh, for us, for me and a lot of people is to understand this first and come to terms with it before you can move on and move beyond it. 
Well, I think there's already those that uh, that have come across that kind of emotional contact and said to themselves that I'm not going to eat this anymore because yes. there's too much of a connection. But yes. then you get to the other side of, I really like that, but I know I can't and I will not. Um, what do I have in replacement? because that is going to be the the biggest hurdle for us is our addiction of putting something in our mouth to eat it. Um, when we, all we need is, and all we're looking for is the fields of the thing that we're eating. So if we're able to, to supplement that, we will have to, in a way, to be able to overcome our addiction, I'm going to call it. Yeah, we understand. I mean, the food that we eat is just provides the body with energy. And that's the simple and purest form. And but we have to understand that yes, we will be able to start replacing that that uh, energy, and that also the food is is a is an emotional attachment for a lot of us. You know, because we all sit around the table together as a family and eat food. Uh, people eat food as a comfort. Um, so it's more of an emotional factor than anything else. And one has to, we'll have to overcome that emotional factor. I think we also have to look at the fact that, um, you know, when we get to understand this technology and the connection we have with everything, it, it's going to have to get to the point where we don't eat because, you know, one, one man's pet dog is another man's food in China. And, um, you know, it's just because there's a closer connection that people find it apparent to eat that. But when we end up with a very close connection to plants, um, which we're going to, um, it, it, it would be just as apparent to eat your, your plant friends. And so the, the sort of um, glee with which a lot of vegetarians try to poke fun at people who eat meat is it's just another you know, point on the scale of, 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 you know, which friends do you eat and which friends don't you eat? So it's, you know, uh, there's no moral superiority at all anymore either. Any other questions? I have no question, but I'd like to share a photo made by myself. Mm, sure. So uh, no copyright uh, there, issues. There is a, a hand raised by Re. Uh, did he have something more to, to ask or a question before we move to that, Sandor? Okay, this was related to something previous, so maybe it will become uh, not actual. Uh, Peter has his hand up too here. I'll bring him in. If you allow me just uh, 20 seconds. Yeah, go for it, Shander. Uh, this is about a tree which has a very good friendship with children. Uh, in Budapest, we have the Margaret Island on Danube, and there is a very old platan tree. This photo was made in March. And uh, it looks like it's extending its branches, like extending some arms for the kids, for the children to play with. Beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful. So that was my 20 seconds. Thank you, Sandro. That was lovely. <laughs> There were those questions there? Well, yes, this is Peter. Yes, Peter. And I, I had a question in regards to the different aspects of emotion that was brought up. Um, the first part was during the um, presentation on the soul, the emotions were um, spoken of as being an aspect of the past that was blocking us in certain ways from um, expressing our full potential, if I put it in my own language. And then you're talking about using the emotions as a way to communicate with the plants. So 
I mean, I, I understand the difference, but I think it would be good to explain how those two aspects are different. Because one, when I'm communicating with my, my plants or my garden, um, it's, it's total presence. It's total, you know, giving and communication. And I can see and um, experience the difference of when I am in that state and when I'm not, and the plants respond accordingly, where we're talking then in the soul aspect of how the emotions then are keeping us in the past. And I was wondering if you could go into that a little bit. I think on the when we are in nature and uh, we with the plants, it's on a very uh, loving basis that we connect with the plants. Um, otherwise, if you don't have that connection with the plants, you just don't go out in nature. You know, we either do or we don't. And so when we do, we, we, it's on that loving basis. And I just have my experience. It's, and with the communication with the plants, it's, it's just a knowing that you have um, with the plants. You know, it's very seldom, but you only get that loving effect. You know, when you go and walk in the forest, you don't come out of a forest feeling angry or upset. Um, you come out of a forest feeling um, loving and full of energy. Um, it's because that's what you're interacting with on, on, on the plant side is through the, through the, the sort of the loving emotion. And the plants are only giving all the time. The plants give. And um, if we give to the plants, uh, they give in return. And it, it seems to build a wondrous thing. And yes, it's through emotion that you're giving because you love them. Uh, that's what I feel. I, I look at those plants and I say, you're just so beautiful. You, you're gorgeous and I love you. And they respond to that. It is an emotion. When we talk about the emotions that are blocking and that's history, these are the negative things, the negative consequences of our perception of, of reality and when things haven't gone our way. And this is where the unconditional comes part comes because the negative emotions come from certain conditions not being met. Um, you know, we expect something and then it doesn't happen. We expect love from our parents and we don't get it all. We expect to be able to do something and we can't achieve it. And it gives us frustration or, or, or anger or anxiety. So all these negative things are what, what creates the filter, but the positiveness is is what's radiating from our soul. And yes, it's still an emotion um, and we can call it an emotion, but it's coming from our soul and it's, and it's the giving aspect and the loving aspect. And that is what connects us to the plants and they just thrive on that. And um, they give us back. It's incredible how they just give back to us. Um, they, they are wonderful, wonderful creatures in that regard. I but it's not only the plants question. though it's the rocks it's the it's the beauty of the environment that you're in at the moment so if you yeah. take it the moment and uh, and enjoy the beauty no matter where you are because you can see the beauty in the tundra of the of the far north or in the mountains in new zealand right it's the it's you can feel the the beauty there of the environment Sometimes we connect on a, on, on a diff, you know, s certain levels because I've found it hard to sometimes find the beauty here in Australia when I've been used to a different African, um, a, 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 you know, beauty because Australia is very harsh and the environment is very different and the colors are different and the feel is different. But yes, everything has got its own beauty if you can connect to the fields because everything is a field strength. And so it's just a case of, of, of understanding that aspect and and seeing the beauty in everything around us i know exactly what you mean because uh, i'm from british columbia so a lot of mountains and i always feel myself wanting to go back to those mountains and unfortunately i'm not i mean i'm not that cl that uh, far but i'm not that close either so i have to find the beauty of where i am and uh, it is a matter of attuning yourself to that environment to to be able to see that beauty yeah, just connection with those right fields. Rick, I'm sorry. Uh, um, 
We have a thing, uh, a comment from Doug, and uh, that is a preamble to my question, which is, uh, Doug says, uh, we eat even the atoms or at atmas, but they willingly give their energy in loving service to us. So <clears throat> my question would be, um, let's pretend that I'm a, a piece of celery, let's say, and um, I'm about to be um, eaten chomped on and uh, I'm thinking okay well uh, looks like the end of my life here as I know it but what if I was as a piece of celery um, and I see this big you know mouth coming at me what if that mouth had that unconditional love attached to it and that was the intent coming into this engagement was fully unconditional love for that piece of celery and elevating that piece of celery up to a higher level such that that piece of celery recognizes, wow, I'm going to become part of this unconditional loving entity. What a better life I can possibly be of service for to give to this high, higher entity to help them with their work, to become part of them, to be carried with them in this field of unconditional love. Wow, that's way better than hanging out with my friends in the field, uh, you know, back in the matter level of the, uh, you know, the, the dirt hanging out in the dirt. There's not much happening there. I grow, I hang out, but wow, what a chance to become part of something greater, something larger, something uh, of a higher consciousness, a higher level. You wouldn't recognize that as a piece of celery, but you recognize that there's something benevolent about this entity, not malevolent. Some entities, you know, the last one that took a chunk out of me, well, boy, he had a real attitude, and I'm glad I didn't become part of him. <laughs> But this one, whoa, he's showing unconditional love. I would love to be part of that entity, okay? This is what I'm presenting as a question. Can we not elevate our food to the point where the food naturally wishes to become part of us? We wish it to become part of us, and it is a natural merging of the fields and exchange of energies in the in the name of service not in the name of personal indulgence or the name of oh boy you taste good or um you know any uh, even in the name of just getting energy out of it it's in the name of uh, being of service to allow us the energy to be able to be of service to others and it's Otherwise, we may not be able to be of service if we were to lose our health or to lose our energy and so on. I got a question for you, though, Rick, on that. Okay. Where was the salary raised? Was it raised in a greenhouse? Was it raised with love? Or was it raised on a farm with a bunch of pesticides? Does that make a difference? Well, either way, it's got a soul. And either way, we have to elevate it to come to a common understanding, a merging of fields, rather than what we call a killing of something. Because killing, if you look at it differently, and instead of killing, call it transmutation, transformation of those fields. And we're transforming it from this thing that looks like a celery into a GAN state in our mouth and into the plasma state inside of our body if we're getting the energy out of it and then back into the GAN state, back into the matter level and out the other end of the body eventually. But the essence of it, the some of the actual elements of that substance, but definitely the, the energies of it, the, uh, the essence is in, it gets embedded into our body as part of us. That, that becomes a, 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 a symbiotic relationship again because some plants uh, take a, a strawberry, for example, 
um, they want to be eaten. That is the fruit um, to be eaten so that they're able to uh, to spread and uh, and continue being strawberries mm -hmm. for the rest of the world. Good and there's many different uh, circumstances of that. Uh, but what but what I think you're trying to say is that even with the the way that something was raised, let's say a piece of salary in a greenhouse with love compared to on a farm raised with its other salary through a bunch of other inputs that are not good for it. Um, if by elevating it before you ingest it, would that make a difference? Would that bring that salary to the point of my life is worth it anyways? I think so. I think so. It's in that sense, it doesn't matter how the salary was raised in a way, um, but that, that energy will become part of us either way. But for the benefit of the salary, we can, and for the benefit of the relationship, the karma between this um, fruit or vegetable and, and ourselves, we have to make the, we have to make the energies um, equal and make them equal to us. In other words, make, make it all us in a way, uh, uh, because everything is, um, from the point of view of the soul and other souls, all souls are souls, all center uh, principality energy and occurring all in that moment and so on. So uh, if we can see eye to eye with the salary basically and just uh, assimilate it, we are assimilating then rather, rather than killing. There's no killing in that instance. It's an assimilation of energies. It's a transmutation of energies. But haven't we been taught to pray for what we eat since we were all children, basically? Yeah, we usually try to get through the prayer part, prayer part really quick and get that over with so we can go chopping on the food, generally speaking. Right, so the, the essence of that statement was lost. Right, well, this is the thing, because it's, it's not um, taught in a, a scientific manner or anything. It's taught as something that the church tells you to do or someone tells you to do in order to... Uh, be thankful because you have food and people in Africa don't is one of the stories and that kind of thing. It's more of a, a, a gratitude thing, a general gratitude thing, rather than a specific bringing the food to life exercise, which might be uh, more beneficial in that moment to, you know, be equal with the fields, to get into the fields rather than into some psychology about it or some uh, uh, guilt trip or something that often is the case with that uh, that prayer around the meals a lot of stress for many people <clears throat> it's also very beneficial for others as well and i mean it does tend to allow, allow you to at least focus on on the meal and on being thankful at least which is part of that emotion that emotion of gratitude, extreme gratitude, uh, should be there with each you know bite we take, essentially, and that's so often not the case. And we might not even think too much about the food until we've already wolfed it down, so to speak. And then said, "I I ate too much." Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. No, I think there's there's many ways. Coming back to your original point there, Rick, is are we coming up with wonderful stories so that we don't feel that guilty about eating them? And then the other point at the same time, the other side of the coin is, as Vin said, there are plants which uh, want their flowers and their fruit to be eaten so they can distribute the seeds um, all over the place, which guarantees their survival of their offspring. So it's sort of two dilemmas that, that we do face with the plants. Well, maybe they've said, well, you're going to eat me anyway, so I might as well make it worthwhile. <laughs> well, that, that happens. <laughs> they in are winning this once they, again. 
<laughs> that actually does happen mm-hmm. in viruses okay. where they, they create a certain circumstance or a certain environment in their host, which then turns into another um, uh, aspect of its life, which turns into something else eating it, which turns into something else eating and this and the chain starts all over again. And that's how it guarantees its survival. Mm-hmm. Hi everyone. I'd like to to ask. Uh, I understand this as a teaching. We are not doing this anymore. Maybe it's good you came to the ch- ch- teaching part because when we go and translate this to other language, uh, this is more like a debate, and it's. I think it's lost this uh, mean. Uh, don't you agree? Perhaps we got too far afield. Mean okay. Yeah, Thanks. we've uh, gone away from maybe the. Uh, essence of this teaching here so right any other questions and we can call it a day yeah and that mean uh, i had the the raise hand for a long time so i came through it so um i i would like that because you talk here about all creatures have a soul and someone else already talked about it the mineral world also and you can give this understanding because we, we talk about it. This is all uh, a magnetic fields that we express through uh, and make physicality. Uh, and there's different uh, uh, experience of um, uh, understanding and uh, souls. Uh, so if you, and, uh, if you can uh, so talk about this, uh, uh, that uh, even an uh, atom has a soul. So uh, the heart has a soul, so we belong, we are all connected through the soul, and that's all. Yes, thanks. I, you are correct in that everything, even the rock and the crystal and the atom has a soul. I didn't want to bring it into this one at first because even just creating or saying that the plants and all the other animals around us have a soul is going to be quite a lot of information for people to process. So um, we need to come to terms with certain things first before we can go on um, to say that everything else has a soul um, because then it becomes a bit more harder for people to understand and accept so we have to go step by step, but you are correct. Yeah, I just talk about because some questions uh, touched points and for answer uh, mm-hmm. could be for be- good for the, uh, this idea. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of information to this, and we're trying to um, sort of bring it out on a very uh, slow, methodical process so that people can digest bits of information and then we can move on and build on it in, in the later uh, parts of these workshops. So, and, and we really do realize that there's a lot of private students that have been around the foundation for a long time and so they do have a lot more knowledge. Um, and so, which is great, but we're trying to really bring this out to um, the public there that haven't had a chance to really go into the information. So we're just trying to bring it out on a step-by-step basis for more for the the public to understand. So we do have to go that little bit slower and bring them along with us as we go. Any other questions? Okay, um, next week, what we're going to be doing is going a bit more deeper into the, the science aspects. And then we're going to be looking at the nano and specifically the nano coating of, of copper. And um, the, I've asked, uh, I'll be doing a presentation on, on nano coating of copper. And um, we'll also have Sandor with us next week as well. So he'll be able to ask a answer a lot of questions that we'll all have on the nano coating and you'll see that's why I haven't brought in the GANs for next week either because I know 
we spend a lot of time just on the nano and it's important that we get that concept uh, correct. So we'd rather spend more time on that and we'll do the GANs at a later stage. Okay, and I think that we can uh, call it an end for the, today's workshop. Thanks everybody for participating. Thank you, Dr. Rodrigo. And thank you, Lisa, for your part in uh, bringing the knowledge. Thank you. Thanks, Rick and Vince and Flint. Yes, thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, we'll play a little slideshow to go out here. Is there anything else that we should say before ending? No, it's all good. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Monday, same time, same place. And don't forget our uh, uh, tomorrow morning is the uh, eighth One Nation, One Planet, One Race for World Peace public meeting on this channel. We'll say tomorrow afternoon. CED. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I always go by yeah Central European time, which is, is correct. 4 p.m. Central European time. Thank you, Flint. Okay, I think i um, got this lined up here. Okay, thank you everybody for attending the Understanding Plasma Science Part 2 of the 12-part series for Monday, October 2nd, 2015. And we'll end the uh, meeting now with some music and slideshow.